Well, coming up on OU Nightly, hundreds of thousands are still without power after Hurricane Helene. We have the latest. Plus, hear from both sides of the proposed entertainment district, and we recap last night's vice presidential debate. This is OU Nightly. Now, thanks for watching OU Nightly. I'm Chloe Arroyo. And I'm Kennedy Patterson. This morning, university officials and City of Norman leaders held an event promoting the proposed entertainment districts. Oh, Unite Lee's Kaylee Jo Hommel is live with the details from the event. Kaylee Jo, how'd it go? There's nobody. Well, Chloe, what was supposed to be a meeting talking about how taxes will help pay for the new entertainment district really just felt like a pep rally. University and city leaders came together to vo voice their support for the new district. All right, well, we apologize for the technical difficulties. Thank you, Kaylee, so much for that. While the university is publicly showing its support for a new arena, many Norman residents say they want the issue put to a public vote. They're fighting to make that happen by gathering enough signatures to call for one. OU Nightly's Olivia Hayes joins us live with the latest on the petition effort. Oh. Yeah, Chloe Kennedy, I'm here on Porter Avenue outside of or in front of one of the many petition booths around Norman. Now, now they're looking to get 6,000 signatures, but they're shooting for 8,000 in case any are deemed invalid. I spoke with a volunteer named Debbie Burleson earlier today whenever I was here, and she expressed no worry that they would be able to get all of the signatures. I have a petition here with me right now, and it's actually really easy to fill out. All you need is your first and last name, your address, your birth month, and a signature. And you also have to be a register, registered to vote in the city of Norman. Reporting live in, in Norman, Olivia Hayes, OU Nightly. Well, thank you for the update, Olivia. As the war of words over the entertainment district continues, the OU Daily is reporting it has received messages that show OU students were offered money to attend the Norman City Council meeting the night of the vote. The student-run news outlet says it has screenshots of a group chat stating there is someone who would pay $15 an hour to students who would attend the meeting, but they couldn't tell anyone why they were there. OU Nightly reached out to the OU Daily for comment on the story published, but they declined. And last night's vice presidential debate was the first and only face-off between the candidates. CNN Julia Benbrook has more on how some of these issues they are discussed are playing out right now. Again, we apologize for the technical difficulties. Now, Oklahomans are lending a helping hand to those in need in the southeast. OG&E, an electricity provider in central Oklahoma, is in the area helping to restore power. Nearly 100 power workers from the company are in Waynesboro, Georgia today. OG&E says the level of devastation is so severe that crews are having, rebuilt, having to rebuild infrastructure, excuse me, something much more time consuming than usual repairs after a storm. And with the sustained power outages in the southeast, mm -hmm. our campus weather authority is tracking the number of outages in the tropics for yet another area in, to watch in the Gulf of Mexico. OU Nightly meteorologist Taylor King is here with the latest. Taylor? That's right. As mentioned earlier, there are hundreds of thousands of people still without power. South Carolina, we're sitting at nearly 500,000 people without power. Again, that's like the highest uh, amount of people in that region. Thank you to those who are going out to help uh, help alleviate those who are experiencing those power outage. Now we do have to tape this area and look at the Gulf of Mexico over the next seven days, 40 to 60% chance of a tropical storm development that could possibly go over the same areas that were afflicted by Hurricane Helene recently. And there are also some areas in the Atlantic that we are also keeping an eye on. But quickly, let's backtrack back here to Oklahoma, where we're sitting in the 80s right now throughout most of the state. However, up to the northwest, we are seeing some 90s sprinkled throughout here and there. And coming up, we are actually going to be looking at our allergy report and as well as to see how long these warm temperatures can continue and when we can expect our next cool down. All right, well, we'll see you in a bit, Taylor. Thanks so much. President Biden and Vice President Harris on the ground in the areas devastated by Hurricane Helene. Julia Roberts has that and the rest of today's stories from the News Center. 
Chloe, President Joe Biden is making his appearance in North and South Carolina. Meanwhile, Vice President and Presidential nominee Kamala Harris visited those impacted by hurricane in Augusta, Georgia. President Biden flew over storm damage, taking an aerial tour of Asheville, North Carolina. Former president and presidential nominee Donald Trump visited the affected areas in Georgia Monday. And now tensions remain high in the Middle East as Israeli forces in Iran backed Hezbollah fighters clash in Lebanon. It comes after Iran launched its biggest attack ever on Israel Tuesday. Israeli prime minister says Iran will, quote, pay for the attack. President Joe Biden commented that he does not support a possible Israel attack on Iranian nuclear sites. New federal data shows migrant crossing at the U.S.-Mexico border remain at their lowest since levels since 2020. Data shows the U.S. Border Patrol recorded around 54,000 interactions along the border in September. Officials say U.S. Customs and Border Protection process nearly 1,500 appointments daily. And California becomes the first state to ban the use of red dye number 40, along with five other chemicals commonly served in foods at public schools. Chloe Kennedy. Thank you, Julia. Now the death toll rises and many people are still unaccounted for following Hurricane Helene. But first, we're going to go back to Kaylee Jo Hommel. She is live outside and she's going to give us a look, an update on the TIF petition. And up What was supposed to be a meeting discussing how taxes would help pay for the new entertainment district really felt more like a pep rally. City and university leaders came together to voice their support for the new district. No, it is a new move forward. The city of Norman moving forward with the Rock Creek Entertainment District after a narrow five to four vote from city council. Norman leaders gathered this at the project's future the home voicing their support. What this is going to do for Norman is deliver memorable experiences to the guests that are coming to Norman, not just the citizens as well. It's been looked at very closely. This is a remarkable and stunning opportunity. This will allow us to flourish and to prosper. This is a catalyst for growth. We will attract new businesses and new people. City leaders briefly assured there would be no tax increase or risk to the public. Instead, the change is where the tax money is going. No sales taxes or assessments will be raised on the citizens. If you spend money inside this district, you will support it. If you do not, you won't. Reporting from the future site of the Rock Creek Entertainment District, I'm Kaylee Jo Hommel. Back to the studio. Thank you, Kaylee Jo. And up next, what FEMA is doing to offset the devastation. Plus, an update on the California landslides. We'll tell you what geologists have said about the progress. and devastation across the southeast after Hurricane Helene and the National Guard's efforts to provide relief to those in need. Plus, a California community losing their homes to landslides. Colson Pocock explains in today's Earth Report. Hurricane Helene has claimed at least 180 lives across six states in the southeast, making it one of the deadliest storms in U.S. history. At least 600 people remain unaccounted for, FEMA says it's responded to at least 1,000 people in need of shelter as recovery efforts continue. The National Guard says it's actively working to bring relief supplies to people stranded in Asheville, North Carolina, after major flooding from Hurricane Helene. At least 100,000 pounds of FEMA emergency relief supplies have been delivered to the area. Air Force officials says it's using helicopters to bring supplies to isolated communities. President Biden has ordered 1,000 active duty troopers to assist in hurricane relief efforts. And a sense of hope in California where officials say landslides show signs of slowing in a residential area. Ranchos Palos Verdes, California has been under a local state of emergency due to landslides, causing major damage to homes since October 2023. 
Geologists say landslide movement in the area has decreased by 13 percent. And the UK is the first major economy to stop burning coal for electricity. Britain's last coal-fired power plant closed its doors Monday. Kennedy, Chloe, back to you guys. Well, thank you, Colson. Now Americans are panic buying, buying toilet paper again. And up next, we'll tell you why and everything you need to know about how the port strike affects you. Also coming up, I have the warmer temperatures and the allergies in the rundown of when we expect that to possibly end coming up after this. Hello everyone, welcome back to OU Nightly. We're currently looking south down at Highway 9 where we're actually going to be seeing some rather nice temperatures right now. 86 degrees, it's still rather dry out, but overall it's looking rather sunny down uh, on the south campus. Let's zoom out a little bit at the metro right now. 86 here in Norman, 87 up in Oklahoma City. We are seeing a couple 90 sprinkled out here and there in the metro, and that's the same story when we look at the entire state. 92 up in Guyman, but if we look down with our friends in Idabel, they're still sitting in the low 80s. So again, you know, we're still relatively spread out. Now our allergen report, we're still sitting at the high level for weeds, trees and mold. All sitting at that high level. Ragweed and elm trees are still those main contributors that are affecting those high allergen indices. And these are expected to stick around for a little bit longer. The Climate Prediction Center has an above average outlook for temperatures. This is being caused by a high pressure system that is off over to the west. That's going to be causing us to not only be above average for temperatures, but below average for precip. So again, we're going to be expecting those dry conditions and warmer conditions to last at least a little bit longer. Now these heights, these high pressure system is going to cause us to actually dip down rather low 65 here in Norman 66 in Oklahoma City for the lows tonight 55 all the way up in Guymon. So a little bit above average for this time of year and it's going to be relatively clear for the night as we go in and then tomorrow we're actually going to see our temperatures increase up into the low 90s 93 by 4 p.m which is above average again for this time of year. Now we're going to take a look ahead at the seven day forecast where again we're just seeing clear skies for the most part. And on Monday we actually are looking at that possibility of a cool down as we have those 90s up until Sunday and then we dip down to 83 on Monday, which of course will be coming with those clouds and possibility some stronger winds that will be a coming with this cooler front that could come in after this weekend. Now, of course, we do expect this to stick around for a little bit longer. Now, of course, we can also look at the future with those 90 degree temperatures that you know are for the end of the week. Mm -hmm. 92 degrees. My goodness, yeah. this isn't normal for this time of year. No, is it? it's not. Normally we're sticking around the low 80s, upper 70s for this mm -hmm. area around October, you know, fall mm -hmm. weather. Lots of us expecting to be wearing those sweatshirts right. still. Right, exactly. We want to get into fall. It's yeah. it's Halloween season. You know, it's yes. October. Yes. Are you dressing up for Halloween? Honestly, I don't know yet, actually. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I thought about doing Miss Frizzle because, you know, oh. I have a very nice science dress, wear some cool science earrings, too. I love that. Yes. Mm -hmm. That we is love awesome. Are you dressed up for Halloween? To be determined, we don't know, especially when we don't know how this weather is going to be. Right, you right. never know. You never know if I need sleeves or shorts, you know. Right, you never know. exactly. You could bundle up so much, I or, know. you know, it is. it could be a whole lot warmer for Halloween. Yes. So, thanks well, thank so you, much, Taylor. Taylor. Yeah, mm -hmm. of course. And Americans could start seeing shortages of chocolate, fruits, and alcohol due to strikes on the East and Gulf Coast. Tens of thousands of port workers are striking across the nation, closing ports like the one in Wilmington, Delaware, America's largest banana port. This means bananas and other fruits usually grown overseas could be scarce, along with ingredients like sugar and cocoa powder. If you enjoy imported chocolate, meats, or alcohol, be expected to pay more. The strike shouldn't affect things with a long shelf life like clothing or products made in North America like toilet paper. All right, well, OU football was missing some faces against Auburn last week. And now heading into the bye week, the Sooners get an extra week of rest. Coming up, we will have which Sooners will be on, back on the turf next weekend. And OU softball is back for the first time since winning their fourth championship. 
Stay with us to hear more in sports. Hello, I'm Hallie McPherson and it's time for sports. It is a good time for a bye week for OU football as the Sooners could get some key pieces to puzzle back just in time for their trip to Dallas. Head coach Brent Venables gave injury updates this morning on the SEC coaches teleconference. Venables says kicker Tyler Keltner will be back next week and we could potentially see Taylor Tatum and Deion Burks back. We had Billy Bowman and Ard Mason Thomas right here on Sooner Sports Pad last night. The defensive duo says they are on the hunt for some sacks. Once the season has ended, you know, we go through spring ball and um, fall camp and our coaches just, you know, emphasize those two big things. You know, we do turnover circuits all the time in practice, just working on punching the ball out different type of ways, you know, make sure we catch it, secure it. And then, you know, just with the sacks, you know, the D-line has done an incredible job of stepping up and every single one of them has pushed each other to, you know, be, be better. What we've been doing in January, you know, we've been, our, our, as a coaching staff, they showed us how many sacks we missed and it was really embarrassing. So, like, actually get the sacks and how Billy was saying since January, going out and doing it is just different from this year. The Sooners may be on a bye week, but I don't think OU fans will be buying these odds. DraftKings Draft Kings ranked OU football at ninth with plus 15,000 odds of winning the SEC Conference, with Texas at one holding the best odds. A duo is coming back together like peanut butter and jelly, as Sterling Shepard is added to Tampa Bay's wide receiver room, joining an old teammate, Baker Mayfield, signing a one-year veteran salary benefit worth $1.21 million. And you'll be seeing more of this Buccaneer duo. These former Sooners suit up and hit the road to Atlanta for their Thursday night game against the Falcons. Baker Mayfield has had a good start leading the Bucs to a 3-1 record. Kickoff starts at 7:15. The crack of the bat is back in action in Love's Field tonight. Natty Patty Gasso and her girls hold the first Oklahoma Battle Series tonight. The Battle Series consists of three inner squad scrimmages. The Sooners start swinging at 6:30 tonight here in Norman. From cleats to courts, OU Volleyball heads east down and bound to Kentucky, marking their first SEC game on the road ever. The Sooners start their match at 7 p.m., looking to improve to a 2-1 record in the SEC. Kennedy, Chloe? All right, well, thanks so much, Hallie. The, count the Halloween countdown is on, and this year you may see new colors for the classic pumpkin. And we'll tell you what color to look out for right after the break. I'm Kariana Gamboa at the OU Nightly Update Desk. Thousands of Bank of America customers are reporting problems with their online bank accounts today. The reported outage started earlier this afternoon. Some customers say they couldn't sign in, others reporting they were able to log on but alarmed to see their balances at zero, despite having money in the bank. Bank of America has not yet commented on these reports. Chloe, Kennedy? Well, thanks, Kariana, for the update. Pumpkins are usually orange, but these look a little different. As Halloween quickly approaches, many kids are filled with excitement, while others grow in fear. Now, behavior analyst Sarah Lothamer says trick-or-treating overwhelms many kids on the spectrum. Now, to bring awareness, the trick-or-treaters will have blue pumpkin pails. Parents ask residents for patience and understanding during the fun time. You know, I wish we were able to trick-or-treat, like that was acceptable oh, to yeah. go out and Get, ask for candy for free, you know. I know. <laughs> <We're from college laughs> students. I know. Honestly, miss those days. I would get that uh, king size Reese's peanut butter cup. Oh, absolutely. Be so good. Or that yes. king size Snicker too. Yeah. Just gotta get those big candy bars too. For I'm sure. But a Kit Kat girl. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. fair. I love Kit Kats. You can't go wrong. But all that chocolate's gonna melt in the weather. Definitely. Yeah. Final especially check. right now, we're gonna be seeing temperatures up up in the 90s by the end of this week, and then of course we do see that possibility of a cool down on Monday. Day where we could possibly be dipping down into the 80s and with a low in the 60s. Oh, you know, yeah. cooler weather, so we'll take it. Yes. We'll take what we can at this point. Honestly, you know? yes. No, I'm so ready to break out those sweaters and, you know, just cozy up, get some hot apple cider. It'd be Ooh. so great. <laughs> are you guys eggnog fans? No. A little. Yeah, you are? A little here and there. I love it so, so much. But I understand the hate. Yeah. I completely understand it. Yeah. So. 
Not All right. Forte. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks so much. Yeah. And thank you for watching OU Nightly. I'm Chloe Arroyo. And I'm Kennedy Patterson. Be sure to watch OU Nightly live weekdays at 430. Good night.